Well, I think today is proof that not everything has to be rocket surgery. Today, I'm just making some vice draw pads. I started out with material selection. In this particular case, I chose basswood, a rather soft wood. That way, with whatever I'm clamping, I'm not going to ding mar or dig into the workpiece. Then all I had to do is bring it over to my crosscut sled and slice up the material to the appropriate size. Then I brought my table saw fence over and just trimmed up one side to make sure that it was 90 to the surface. Then I could bring it over to my bench and lay out everything. This first section here, I'm going to take that out. It's going to be a little bit safer doing it this way. And that way I can just cut the piece away from the, the major part of the stock and then just trim this last bit off. I adjusted my table saw blade height, moved my rip fence over, and made my first cut as part of the rabbit. Readjusting the table saw blade height to match up with that first initial cut, slid my fence over, and I could make that cut. I wanted to make sure to mark the other side. Sometimes you mark only one side. And you, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't cutting the wrong piece here. This little magnetic feather board really comes in handy, kind of keeping the piece against the fence. After readjusting, I just raised my blade height to make sure that it would cut completely through the workpiece. And there you go. Then I installed my table saw sled. In this case, I was working on another project where that aluminum stop was on. So I didn't want to mess with that. So I just installed a wood stop to work with this particular build. Good practice is make sure to square up one edge of your piece. Then you can slide it over to your stop and make your cut. And I have no idea what this is. Then I moved over to my drill press and I set up two stop blocks and a half inch Forstner bit. That way I could move the two pieces back and forth and I just would ensure that my holes are in the exact same location on each of the pieces. My drill press isn't the best in the world and I set it as perfect as I could for the depth for these rare earth neodymium magnets. But it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a cheap drill press. It's not necessarily set up to adjust for that. And I wanted these things just flush with the surface so i used a playing card and i showed how in another video if you guys are interested i'll put a link up in the corner there and down in the description below but that helps because these playing cards it just lifts it up about a ten thousandths of an inch off the surface and then you're pretty much good to go they're perfect shims to have around the shop being they normally measure between 11 and 12 thousandths then I could use some sandpaper and just kind of scuff up one side of the magnet, give it a little bit of a, a mechanical tooth. That way, when I use some CA glue to secure them into place, that way it was a, a little bit better of a bond, a little bit better of a hold. And then I used a pencil to hold it down to make sure the magnet was sitting nice and flat inside that hole. Used a little activator, and I was good to go. Then I could get out some veg tan leather and cut approximately whatever I needed for a size. And I ended up actually cutting it in half again just to make two separate pieces. I think that was just going to be a little bit easier when I went to apply them. Then I just used some contact cement. Uh, this stuff works really great with leather. You just put it on both surfaces, wait for the solvent to flash off and the surface to get tacky. And that way you can position them on there. And now being that I had the magnets on, I just used my table saw wing to hold the wood piece in place. And that way I could just kind of apply the leather. And then I came back with a sharp utility knife and trimmed them all down to size. Being I was right here by my vise, I just squeezed them in there to make sure the leather pads were nice and secure on the surface. Then with a V-groove bit in my router table, I could run my pieces past that. And that was going to create a little bit of a channel. That way if I was trying to secure any dowel or brass rod or anything like that, it would give a spot for that and just kind of make it a better secure uh, clamping surface. And this just goes to show these smaller projects. Uh, I've never routed leather before. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I wanted to try it. And it was definitely something fun to experiment with. It wasn't as clean as I liked, but, you know... You know, live and learn. It's even the little projects you can learn from. So I just used a sanding block to, you know, clean up some of the burrs and stuff. And I think it turned out pretty nice. I also added a vertical one in there too. That way I could do some uh, vertical clamping if I had any dowel rod or whatever it may be. 
Then I don't use my mechanics vise a ton. I just have it mounted to a piece of plywood that sits in my woodworking vise. And as you can see, uh, you know, a piece of wood dowel is perfect. Or I'm working on a little uh, hand plane and I had this polished brass rod and I had to cut that to length. And that worked out perfectly. It didn't mar that soft, polished brass finish. So I, I think it turned out really nice. I think kind of like I said, the moral of the story here is something that's simple. You can incorporate something brand new. Like I said, I've never routed leather before. And I guess it wasn't terrible, but hey, I think it worked out. Uh, and hopefully you guys picked up something from this. I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch the video. And if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. If you're into different workshop type projects and build videos, or if you are a subscriber, hit that bell notification. That way you make sure to get a notification every time I post a video. And I posted some more videos here in case you guys are interested. I think you guys might enjoy those. And head over to nickferry.com for even more information. And until next time, you guys, take care.